thousand kilograms worth of red grapes that we harvested today was only a part of the grapes in their vineyard and only a part of the red grapes. So the thousand kilograms that we took to the co-op will be turned into wine by the co-op, but Bob and Gina also kept 500 kilograms of grapes to make their own house wine. So it's a few days later, the must that has been fermenting inside of the shed is ready to be pressed. And the must is basically grape juice, the skins, the seeds, and then they've added yeast to it for fermentation. And this like layer of the skin forms on top and it cuts off the oxygen. So you have to push it down and expose all of the juice to the oxygen. So we've gotten out the barrel press, some tarps, bunch of other equipment that I'm not really sure exactly what it is and today we are separating the wine from the grape skins and the seeds it's gonna go into the barrel press into this big into a smaller bucket into the bigger bucket and then ultimately it's gonna be pumped downstairs and then into my liver <laughs> So pressing the wine today was not part of the plan at all, but Bob and I came out here and we checked the sugar. Actually, Bob came out here, I came and watched, and we checked the sugar with some, some scientific equipment and there was no more sugar left in the must. So that means that the yeast had done its job. And if you would have left it in here much longer, then it would have started to turn to vinegar. So we had to press today. So we're pouring the must into the barrel press, the skins and the seeds are staying inside of the wood and all of the juice is flowing out into this thing. So after it comes out of the barrel press, it's going through a colander and uh, a screen that looks just like a, a window screen. Is that what it actually is or is yes. it just wine yeah. equipment? Yeah, that's no. why it looks like that. <laughs> <Okay. That's> a... <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes into the smaller bucket and at that point it's basically unsettled wine. We're pouring it into the bigger bucket because it's going to need to be pumped into the metal tank in that barrel. is down in the basement. And ultimately it's going to go into a barrel, but the barrel's not ready yet. Right. Let's try a little of this. <gasps> Thank you. And it's getting the first taste. <laughs> little, little, a little, green. little puckery. Not bad. Yay! Not bad for 10 days old. <laughs> now, now it needs is uh, four or five years. <laughs> Go. Whoa. Vino. Beautiful. So the first two years we didn't have this barrel press and what that meant is we took colanders like pasta strainers, took a pile of the must like this <laughs> and just used our hands to squeeze out the juice or the wine. For over a hundred liters. Yeah, more like a couple hundred liters. It was a long process. I mean, you know, what else we have to do? <laughs> Thankfully we had some friends here. Didn't yeah, we had help. We're high tech today though. Yeah. Could it be a more beautiful day for this? I know, it's great, right? You always have a good view when you're working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great idea. Good? Good, yeah. Getting down to the bitter end. Ah. The bitter end. Whoa. <laughs> hey, yeah. I don't know. You think it's wine or coffee? Mm. Mm. Could work for either one for sure. <laughs> There it goes. That's it. Nice. Nice. Okay, let me oh, get in that's here. That's almost perfect. Scrape it out. That's good. Bro. Not sticky, Nate. Not <laughs> not, not, to, not until it dries on my hand. Well, not. Like, oh, I guess there's no like sugar left in sugar. it. We push as hard as we can, and now it's time to use the real press part of the press. I'm gonna put these paddles down. 
How's that thing up there? A little persuasion. That's it. <laughs> Bit of a mess there. Do you remember how we did this love with the blocks? He's a big boy. A poor decision for everybody. <laughs> if we're lucky, we'll get about 130 bottles out of this. Okay. So, how much more do you think this will press out in comparison to what we've already done? Like, will we get a couple buckets? Yeah. Or no clue. Okay. <laughs> I'd say a couple buckets. And how how do you think this changes the taste? As when you press, to... so if you if we press gently, it'll be the same. Okay. Once you get to the point where seeds are starting to crack, then you get a real astringent sort okay. of taste. Oh, that's right. Ah. Nate, you want to do that? No, no. Where else are you going to get to do this, Nate? That's true. All right, give it to me. <laughs> just back and forth? Yeah, just oh. try, to, try to keep this in. I got it. Just kind of gently, yeah, so it doesn't move too much. This is the last bucket before it gets pumped downstairs to the tank. It looks like we got a little over 100 liters of wine. That didn't take long at all. No. It took like less than an hour to press 100 liters. It would have taken a lot longer using this in our hands. <laughs> I, can't, I still can't believe you all did that. Five grams per 100 liters. Uh-huh. That's about 100 liters. So we're adding something to the wine to make sure the fermentation process stops here. That's correct, and to keep, um, it's sort of a go away sign for the bad bugs. Okay. Okay, so that's, I'd say that's scant. So we don't want it to turn to vinegar. Right. Now, all we need to do is stir in the potassium metabisulfite with a sterile instrument. That's a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Beautiful. Now we're gonna pump. Switching where the hose is going in the middle of the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, exactly. Go, go, go. Whoa! The wine is pumping! What an operation. Oh my gosh. This wine is coming from all the way up on the driveway. Okay, and now nice. over here, and then over. Woo! <laughs> and then you dump that in the switch whatever one. We did it! <laughs> okay. That's it. Got one more bottle. All right! Sweet. And that's a wrap on the 2017 Red Vendemia. Y'all are so cool. You guys did a great job. I know. You gals did a great job. Y'all did a you great people. job.